Hello and happy Halloween. My name is Jen. Welcome to or welcome back to my channel, Literary Love 123, where I combine my master's in English with my passion for the horror genre to talk about the books that I read. Today's video is going to be a video essay on Washington Irving's The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. So you probably know this story and you know it as one of the legendary spooky tales that are shared around the time of Halloween. But did you know that there is a lot to learn about American history in this story? So if you would like to know more, stay tuned. This video essay draws on a grad school paper I wrote for a course titled Graduate Studies in the American Renaissance. It was one of my favorite courses where not only did I study Washington Irving, also Nathaniel Hawthorne, Edgar Allan Poe, and many others. But I'm just going to go ahead now and get into why you came here, right? To find out more about Washington Irving's The Legend of Sleepy Hollow, I'm going to go ahead now and pull up some slides that I created for this presentation. I will also make note that at the end, there is a slide that gives all of the works that I cite in this essay, and I will also put a list down in the description box below so that I make sure to give credit to everyone who deserves credit here. So without further ado, I present to you the past and the present in conflict, Washington Irving's The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. In Washington Irving's The Legend of Sleepy Hollow, the inhabitants of Sleepy Hollow maintain a strong connection with the past. When Ichabod Crane disrupts this connection, he is chased out of town. The inspiration behind and the structure of The Legend of Sleepy Hollow reflect this conflict between the past and the present. Washington Irving was inspired by the rich stories that emerged from Europe's history. Irving writes, Europe held forth all the charms of storied and poetical association cultivated by society. At the same time, Irving saw America as full of youthful promise. With these ideas in mind, Irving merges the old with the new in the legend of Sleepy Hollow, taking inspiration from German culture to create stories that depict the struggles of a burgeoning nation. Having been directed to the wealth of unused literary material in German folk tales by Sir Walter Scott, Irving used these folk tales as a source for the legend of Sleepy Hollow. Irving structures the legend of Sleepy Hollow as a frame narrative by writing that it was found among the papers of the late Diedrich Knickerbocker. This opening serves to give an impression of a long story tradition passed down from one generation to the next, from Knickerbocker to Irving and then to the reader. Yet Irving also inserts humor into this concept when he describes the time period of the story as taking place in a remote period of American history, some 30 years hence. In doing this, Irving illustrates the contrast between established European traditions and the blossoming traditions that were emerging in America at this time. In The Legend of Sleepy Hollow, Washington Irving reveals through folkloric elements, humor, characters, and plot, the conflict between long-established traditions and emerging changes experienced by early American settlers as they sought to establish their identity and independence. Sleepy Hollow is haunted by the past. It is inhabited by descendants of the original Dutch settlers. Therefore, there is a lingering presence of the past that still holds sway over the region. The connection between Sleepy Hollow and the past is alluded to when Irving describes the drowsy, dreamy influence that seems to hang over the land. 
Further connections to the past are revealed in the beliefs of some inhabitants that the place was bewitched by a high German doctor or an old Native American chief. However, the most prominent spirit to haunt Sleepy Hollow is that of the Headless Horseman. This Headless Horseman is said to be the ghost of a Hessian trooper whose head had been carried off by a cannonball during the Revolutionary War. Thus, this spectral presence indicates that the repercussions of the war continue to affect the inhabitants of Sleepy Hollow, casting a spell on their daily lives. Tangible evidence of the past spell is revealed in the way that the people who reside in Sleepy Hollow maintain a fixed manner and a fixed custom. One example of their fixed ways is illustrated by the architecture of the Van Tassel home. The home is built on the style handed down from the first Dutch settlers. Additionally, the fixed customs of its inhabitants are seen in the way that they share local stories of hauntings while they gather at parties such as the one held in the Van Tassel home. Among these tales are stories such as the unfortunate Major Andre, the woman in white, and of course the headless horseman. Furthermore, the lingering thoughts of the revolution are also seen in the story of Dofu Martling, a large blue-bearded Dutchman who is said to have nearly taken a British frigate with an old iron nine-pounder from a mud breastwork. Another example of the connection to the past is illustrated by the dishes that are served in the Van Tassel home. When Ichabod sees the prepared food laid out, he is enraptured by the ample charms of a genuine Dutch country tea table, which features heaped up platters of cakes of various and almost indescribable kinds, known only to experienced Dutch housewives. Indicated in this description are both the connection of the local to the past and also Ichabod Crane's desire to consume what the settlers have. Not only has Ichabod Crane come to educate the children, but he has also come with designs of profiting from the inhabitants of the land in Sleepy Hollow. Thompson writes that Ichabod is a symbol of ongoing English desire for total hegemony, hegemony <laughs> over their Dutch neighbors. The Dutch colony welcomes settlers from a, a wide variety of backgrounds which often resulted in domestic conflict with rival English settlements. Thus, in the characters of Ichabod Crane and the Sleepy Hollow villagers, Irving depicts the struggles between the New, England, New Englanders and the Dutch taking place within this region at the time, as you had different cultures colliding in their struggle to establish a new nation. As a schoolmaster coming to Sleepy Hollow, Ichabod Crane is a Connecticut Yankee invading and threatening a New York Dutch society. He disrupts the Dutch Sleepy Hollow with his English worldview, and as a result, he becomes a serious threat to two centuries of stability and hom homogeneity. The newcomer Ichabod stands in sharp contrast to the local hero, Brom Bones. Ichabod is tall and exceedingly lank with narrow shoulders, long arms and legs, and a head that is small and flat. On the other hand, Brom is broad-shouldered with a Herculean frame and great powers of limb. Ichabod is esteemed by the women as a man of great erudition, while Brom is known mostly for feats of strength and famed for his great knowledge and skill in horsemanship. In the depictions of these two characters, Irving reveals the differences between the Connecticut New Englander and the local Dutch villager. Thompson writes that Ichabod Crane symbolizes the culture of the Yankees next door, who favor an expansionist attitude toward the beautiful woodlands, rivers, and meadows to the west, seeking them as new sources of wealth and raw materials. This view is depicted, for example, when Ichabod surveys the Van Tassel farm and sees the fat meadowlands, the rich fields of wheat, rye, buckwheat, corn, the orchards burdened with ruddy fruit, 
and he imagines how they might be readily turned into cash. Additionally, Ichabod also visualizes setting off in a wagon with Katrina and any children they may have to go to Kentucky or Tennessee or Lord knows where. These visions show the difference in the values of Ichabod and Katrina's fra- father, Baltus Van Tassel. Ring writes, the threat that Ichabod Crane poses is something much more serious than his simply coming into possession of the Van Tassel farm because he would literally devour it, thus both destroying the wealth itself and the very conditions of stability and contentment that gave rise to the wealth in the first place. Baltus Van Tassel has worked very hard over the years to build substantial wealth on the land that he cultivates and appreciates, while Ichabod considers only how the farm will profit him. Baltus also shares his abundance with his neighbors by giving the quilting party that Ichabod Crane attends. The profit Van Tassel receives from his farm is not greed-focused in the way that Ichabod's plans would be. As Thompson writes, the Dutch, although they sell their goods and produce, practice a much more easygoing brand of capitalism than do the English next door, preferring lives of sustainable sustenance, conducting much of their business through barter rather than the lust for hard currency, which consumes the New Englanders such as Ichabod Crane. In Irving's tale, New Englander Ichabod Crane is unsuccessful in his attempt to capitalize on the Van Tassel farm. He is rejected by Katrina, and as such, he's also rejected by Sleepy Hollow itself. Ring writes, Ichabod Crane is defeated twice, once by Katrina herself, and again by Brom Bones, who uses Crane's own credulity to drive him from the countryside. Katrina ends up favoring the local Dutchman Brom, perhaps having only feigned interest in Ichabod as a mere sham to secure her conquest of his rival. While Ichabod is considered by much of the female population to be a vastly superior taste and accomplishments to the rough countrymen, such as Brom. In the end, it is Brom's physical strength and deep connection to Sleepy Hollow that wins Katrina's heart. Once Ichabod is gone, the schoolhouse is deserted and falls into decay. Thus, in the end, the past traditions of the Dutch Sleepy Hollow triumph over those of Ichabod, who is nothing more than a speculator, leaving readers to question the value of change in progress if they must be bought at the price of the destruction of stability and order. Thank you. And here is a quick look at the works cited in my essay and then in today's presentation. This list will also be down in the description box below so that you can go check out some of these other resources if you're interested. So I want to say thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you soon in another video. Bye.